In this video, we are going to discuss about GAN, that is Generative Adversarial Networks. And what is GAN in deep learning? How do we use GAN? And what are the several applications of GAN which is there? Now, in simple words, GANs are composed of two neural networks. Those are generator and the other is discriminator. Now, we will study about both of them, that what is generator and discriminator. But firstly, we are going to see that what is GAN. So, generative adversarial networks were first introduced in 2014 in a research paper by Ian J. Goodfellow and other researchers also. Now, you can give it a read to the research paper and the link is mentioned in our tutorial also that this is the research paper which is there and you can give it a read also. Coming back to our discussion that generative adversarial networks or GAN use generative modeling. Now, what is this generative modeling? So, what happens in generative modeling is that we create a new data from the original data. So, first point to be noted is from original data, we create a new data. Also, which means that generative model learn the patterns and the features of input data in such a way that it produces a new data that looks like the same as input data. That means actually the generation of fake data we can say, which looks quite similar to the input data because it learns from the pattern and the features of the input data. In other words, we can also say that it is actually an unsupervised learning. which says that a model pattern and regularities in the data itself. For example, GANs can create a realistic image for a human face by learning the human face images, even though the face doesn't belong to any real person. That means generation of a face which is actually fake. But how does it done? It actually learns from the features of the face images of the human. Now a question might arise in your mind that why GANs are getting so much attention nowadays? Why it is so much in use and it has created such a hype in the world? because of some applications of the GAN as it plays a role in practical life also. So now we are going to discuss how we can see some applications of GANs. So the very first is generating the realistic photos of human face. That I have also discussed to you that it can generate the realistic features of human face by actually creating or we can say learning the human face images or the features which are there, the patterns which are there basically in an input data and then it can generate the realistic faces also. Next we can say the very big example is face aging. Now face aging is nothing to generate human face with ages. For example, right now I am 20 years old and I want to see that looking back at 5 years of age, how I look, my childhood picture. Or even if I want to check that after 20 years or we say I am touching the 40 or 45, then how might I be looking? So that type of thing to generate the human faces with age can be also done with the help of GAN. Third application where it is used is photos to cartoon. Now this thing is also very useful that several photos of the human faces is there and then making the cartoons of those faces. That means creating a certain sort of animation type of pictures can be also done with the help of it. The fourth is text to image translation or the vice versa. So the text to image translation, translating any particular text which is there in the image, that is text to image translation and the vice versa it can also do, that means from image it can generate the text also. Art generation, music generation, video generation, all are used features in the videos and many more. As you can see, GANs can produce high quality and colorful art images, paintings, etc. So more we can do with it. That's only can be human still now, make GANs such popular. That's why humans are so much working on this particular, you can say application of the GANs which are there, that is realistic photo and face aging, fo photo to cartoon and etc. Now let us take a look at the working mechanism of GAN, that how does it actually work. So we see that it is actually the composition of two network layers, we can say the generator and the discriminator. So now we are going to see that how it actually operates. 
So in the working of GAN, first we do not look at this equation. We must see that what happens first and then I will explain this equation to you. So what happens is we can say there is a noise or an input data which is there. So it, I can mark it as input data which is there which is also termed as noise. It passes through the generator we can say. And then generator what actually it does, it actually generates the fake data which is there. Now the role of the discriminators comes into play that let's say with D I am denoting here that this is the discriminator. Now it is actually a set of real data. Let's say X. So real data is also fed into the discriminator and fake data generated by the generator is also fed into the discriminator. Now what discriminator has to does it, it has to identify what is the job of D. It has to identify if D is right then the image is fake or real that has to be identified by D. So this is actually what is happening we can say the flow diagram for the working mechanism of discriminator and the generator. Now what happens it in a GAN network which consists of two model one is the generative model another is the discriminator. So the generative model is represented by G and discriminator with D respectively. The generator used to learn the input data and produce a new data intimate the input data that means which looks quite similar to the input data which has been fed quite similar to the real data which is actually there. So that type of data is actually generated with the help of generator. In simple terms the discriminator works as a classifier that classify the generated data is a fake data or the input data. That type of discriminator role is actually done by with the help of discriminator. These two networks are trained simultaneously which means the generator and the discriminator compete with each other using a min-max game. So this is actually the equation you can see the min-max. The theta g actually represent of the generator and the theta d actually represent of the discriminator. So the min-max game is an optimization strategy only in which two networks try to minimize their loss function. So here you can see it is minimizing the loss function, the discriminator for real data and the discriminator for the fake generated data. So in this equation we are trying to minimize the loss function for the generator so that it can produce fake images that look real and maximizing the loss function of the discriminator so that it cannot distinguish between the real or fake images. That makes our job done. So in the above equation, theta g is the loss function for the generator which is there and theta g is the loss function for discriminator. So what we have to do, we have to increase the loss function for the discriminator and decrease the loss function for generator so that the discriminator cannot distinguish between the real and the fake image. That's what it is done here. Now let us study about discriminator and generator separately. So firstly discussing about the generator model of GAN that Generator model takes a fixed length of random vector as input and generate a sample of that particular domain only. Now this particular vector the input data which is read is drawn from randomly of Gaussian distribution and the vector is used to seed the generative process which is there. After training points this multidimensional vector space will be correspond to the points of the problem domain and forming the compressed representation of the data distribution which is there. That means after passing through this generator actually it generates a generated data also termed as fake data. That means it doesn't have any relevance in the real world or we can say in the real data. It actually studies about the samples or the features we can say of the input data and generates the generated sample according to that only. Such the new points drawn from the latent spits can be provided to the generator model as input and used to generate the new and different output examples also. This is the use of the generator model we can say. Now let's study about the discriminator model. Now the discriminator model of the GAN takes an example from the domain as input and predicts a binary class label that whether it is a real or fake. So we can say that this is actually a binary classification only. So it predicts the real example comes from the trained data set only and the generator example are the output of the generator model. This is also actually we, we can say here that there is actually from the generator model also the samples are feed in. And now the discriminator has the job to identify whether which data is real and fake. The discriminator is normal and well understood classification model only. After the training process the discriminator model is discarded as we are interested in the generator only. So this is the few working of the discriminator the generator model. Next we are going to discuss about the two major types of 
convolution neural network or we can say the GANs which are there and those are conditional GANs and one is the DC GAN that is deep convolutional generative adversarial networks. Conditional GAN are an important exception to the GAN as they use for the conditionality generating an output. The generative model can be trained to generate the new examples from the input domain where the input, the random vector and the latent space is provided with conditioned by some additional input and there comes conditional GAN into play. Those additional input could be class values such as male, female or in the generation of photographs of people or digit in case of generating images and handwritten digits also. So there comes the use of this conditional GAN. Whereas DC GAN actually which we will be majorly operating on and doing some projects is deep convolutional generative adversarial networks are a class of CNN only and have algorithms like unsupervised learning also. So DC GAN is nothing but it has convolutional neural network layers. And this is where it is different from conditional GAN because it has several convolutional neural network layer which is there and also DC GANs are neural network map that input the random noise like Gaussian distributed noise of an image matrix and how using convolutional neural network in the generator provides the better result. So for that we have DC GAN. So we will be majorly discussing about DC GAN in a project in our upcoming video.